well, 73% in the second half, I guess, sums it up. Um, you can't you can't give up, you know, 60% for the game against the Big East team and have an expectation level that you're going to win. Some of it was that we were got away from how I wanted to play the game versus these guys that we pressed and were kind of running around trying to make something happen, which didn't transpire. And then I'm not sure what's going on with our offense, but I'm going to watch the tape probably another 10 times and see. Um, one is we're missing, I mean, it seems like two footers consistently, and then we're shooting the ball way too fast on one pass and just flying there and, and fire it up. So um, I'm hoping a couple of my guys can get healthy over the next four or five days so we can have some, some good practices. And, you know, Javon, I think, is a huge key for our team. He's been he's been hobbled and, and kind of limping around and going one for 11. Uh, it's not conducive to us being being successful. But I thought Seton Hall obviously outplayed us um, 11 for 22 from three. You know. Our game plan was to have them shoot some threes. I mean, they were they had three guys that were made, made one on the year. Really, Jackson was the only guy that was coming in with a good percentage, and um, they shot 50%. Now, some of them were open. I was going to live with a few of those, but not uh, when they started hitting them. So it was kind of a combination of a lot of things, obviously. And, um, you know, even though we're at 7-3, and three, this is not the 7-3 and three I was looking for. I was hoping that we'd have a little bit more momentum going into the, the finals week. Um, but it does give us a chance to heal up, get some practice time in, and get ready for uh, Central Florida, who's, I hope they're in the top 25. That would be great for the, uh, the area and great for uh, hopefully a big crowd. What, uh, what, using a small lineup, what were you hoping to get out of it? I was just hoping to get, um, you know, I was hoping to get the game up and down a little bit more. I was hoping to get Terrell Vincent in the post more, which I thought at times he did a pretty good job of. And I thought Samson could uh, could cover her pope. And I, and I thought we did a good job of that at times. But, you know, over time, when you're going against bigger, more physical guys, sometimes you wear down a little bit, and they were able to take advantage of that. Derek, when you say that this is not the 7-3 and three that you're looking for, are you implying that you feel this team is sort of moving backwards at this point? Well, I, I'm just not happy that we were 7-0 and and then lost three games in a row. I knew that um, I knew that we'd have a tough stretch with Boston College, Maine, and then uh, Seton Hall. But I was hoping that... You know, even if we're seven and three, that we would have been playing a little better, that we would have been moving um, a little bit, I'd say, forward in the right direction. Um, we'll see. I mean, I, I think um, the 11 days off and, and giving these guys some time will give a good indication of where we're at. Because, you know, when you have, you know, young guys, I'll still say they're young, even though they're sophomores, they're still they're still fragile at times, and I'm I'm trying to weigh how much to go at them, but also to make sure that they're uh, mentally still in, in the right situation. You were upset at the effort the other night. Which, is this is this more execution than effort? Well, now it is. <laughs> I thought they. I thought we had some decent effort tonight. You know, while we missed some rotations defensively, and you know, did a lot of aptitude plays on both ends of the floor. I thought our aptitude for the game was was bad at times. The effort was was pretty good. Um, now we have to get much much smarter. Um, and you know, some of it is we got some young guys that are making plays that um, you know we probably need to curtail a little bit and then I gotta get Javon playing better. I mean honestly he, he's much better than he's played the last couple of games and that's that's up to me to get him <coughs> in better positions and get him to play the way he's capable of playing. You had ten shots blocked and a few others that you missed in, how much did, did their <coughs> presence inside kind of it affected us because you know we're not we don't go against guys every day in practice that are like them. So you know it's a little bit different now when you're driving in Pope and a, and a big hit Ada and a few of the other guys are in there. Because Pope really was playing a one man zone. He was just standing there bodying people and blocking balls. Um, and so that, that is a little bit different for our guys. But we, we took some bad shots and you know just threw them kind of at the rim and we're praying that they went in. Freddie got going on a couple of stretches there, but I gotta imagine if somebody can emerge as a good compliment to Anthony, that would take a lot of pressure off him because he's certainly giving you plenty of scoring. Yeah, Anthony's doing a nice job. Um, you know, I think he, he's starting to feel a little bit like he's gotta do too much on his own. Um, so we got to get some guys down. I was hoping we tried to get the ball into to TV a little bit more in the post. Um, he ended up having two falls in the first half, which hurt us some. Um, we tried to get Freddie going a little bit. Um, and, and if Javon can get going, I think that, that lightens up the love. When he was playing his best, Javon, we were playing our best. You know, the way we played in Springfield when he had just come back, I thought he, he was playing very well. Eric, we, we heard that Hashim Bailey has been suspended indefinitely. Does it definitely mean he's gone, or is the door open for him? Uh, the door's open. Um, it was really just a suspension for tonight. Okay. So it's not totally indefinitely, but I'll, I'll see him when we get back to practice and just, uh, you know, sit down with him and talk. Did, did that, was that part of why you, you made the decision to go small? Because you 
you were one the guy down in the middle anyway? Yeah, I think that had something to do with it. Um, and I like, you know, I wanted to make sure I get um, some of those guys more minutes too. I wanted to make sure Terrell Vincent gets 22, 24 minutes because I think he can help us. I want to make sure Samson played too many minutes again, but you know that those guys are getting their minutes because um, you know I think they deserve it how they work in practice. We got the players here. Come the Theodore's play a point for them. Do I have to? You have to, yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, he dominated the game. I, I didn't say it. I thought he was fantastic. Um, 17 points, eight assists, only four turnovers, and. You know, he was doing a great job on the screen and roll stuff of, of just sucking in the defense and kind of, he plays with patience. He's a good player. Um, and he had a good game tonight. So, you know, at the end I tried to double team him and trap him some to give the ball up. But he's, he's good. He's a, you know, he's a junior. He's been around the block a few times and uh, does a nice job of handling pressure. And, and he shot the ball better than uh, anticipated from three. He was two for two. And, you know, like I said earlier, we were going to live with some threes, especially from him and a couple of the other guys that, they went in. I mean, they went right in the basket. So. Okay. Questions? Gary, is this, is this a good time to take a break between games and kind of reorganize? I know you got finals, but. Um, I mean, I think a little guy, a couple guys are banged up. I know uh, mm -hmm. we have guys come up with injuries, even myself. And um, I think it's perfect timing, especially with us losing three in a row. I mean, I think you know, we don't play another game for 11 days. Um, coach is going to let us rest our legs. And with tomorrow and Monday off, and then we're going to get back at it and then you know, try to you know, watch the film and you know, see it and fix it from there. Gary, what's your read on this season so far? Um, I mean, looking at our schedule, I think this was the time period where we knew we were going to go through a, a rough stretch. I mean, we played a, I mean, even Quinnipiac at Quinnipiac was a tough game. We, we pulled that one out, but that was, a, that was a game where we knew that they were very good. Um, we went to Boston College after that. Um, which is another tough loss. And I mean, you look at the main game, it was kind of, of a setup game. I mean, it was a game that, I mean, we feel you're supposed to win, but even coming, up, coming off our, our BC loss, we didn't really know how our young guys were going to act and how we were going to act as a team because we, didn't, we, didn't, we, we haven't lost to that point yet. So we lose that one, and then we come into this one, another a Big East school, um, someone who destroyed us last year, and it was something that we wanted back. And if you look at the course of the game, we made our runs. I mean, I, I want to say we cut it to six a couple of times, but we just had some defensive breakdowns and a couple of guys who, who didn't shoot great percentages on the year, hit some shots, and we just couldn't, we couldn't get over the hump. I mean, we would push and push and push, but we just get to six and seven and eight, but we just couldn't break through that we needed to. Is it in some ways more frustrating? The effort seemed there tonight. There was a question about you guys were really intense the other night. But tonight, everybody seemed into it. Is it more frustrating way to put all that effort out and you still can't keep the game I guess, but at the same time, if you look at the course of the game, I mean, there's, I don't even want to know, I mean, how many missed layups we had. I mean, we get the ball two, three, four feet away from the basket, and we usually make those shots. I mean, so you think about all their fast break layups and all the easy transition buckets they got is because we missed easy shots. It's not like they, I don't want to say they, they killed us. I mean, you look at the score, you think that it, like it got ugly. But if you actually watch the game, it wasn't that bad. We just missed shots that we normally make. Any further? Thanks. Coach, uh, obviously a lot of points. If you're missing your leading score, you must be satisfied with the offense. But, but what did you see out there from your guys today, and especially the balance that you showed tonight? Well, you know, uh, we've been struggling to score over the last eight games, seven games. Uh, you know, but these guys continue to work hard, uh, continue to believe in each other. And, you know, we don't have an offense that focuses around one player. We have an offense that kind of equal distribution, and these guys continue to – I thought they did a great job of watching film uh, of our Arkansas film and realizing mistakes they made. And, uh, you know, we have some really good players on this team, and they're starting to play that way. It looked like in the first uh, few minutes you were – Guys are selling for threes. They weren't off. And it looked like you were attacking the basket a lot more. Was that was that by design or just taking? No, we we like the three point shot. Uh, yeah, these guys are gonna put them up. Uh, you know, I, and I let them put them up. You know, it's one of those things that uh, they work hard. They all work on their three point shot, and they know if they're open, it's a good one. They're allowed to take it. Coach, you've really challenged them this, these, this, these first eight games. Uh, I know some of that schedule was probably a little bit inherited when you it was got all here. It's all inherited. What's the feeling on being 4-4 four four, and how, how the team just navigated this stretch? I'm, you know, 
I'm not happy with being four and four, but I'm not disappointed either. Um, we, we've, you know, when you when you lose a guy who scores 24 points per game uh, after your third game, and you start getting a good rhythm with him, and now we've been on the road. We've only been home twice. We've been on the road six out of the eight times, which is that's been the toughest part. We played good teams. It's just been being away from home and not being able to get in the rhythm. Uh, but these guys have really done a great job of being focused and taking on the challenge. And now we have five at home. Hopefully, we take care of that. Hurt. Uh, they they start without a true center, and it looked like you were really kind of controlled the interior. Was going into this game, did you see this as an opportunity for you to really establish yourself? Uh, yes, they, we uh, through film and everything, and coaching, they told us that they don't really double down on a lot of things that we played this year. Double down, and they kind of pretty much guard one on one. We just try to execute and, and work inside out. How, how much did your ability, not only to block shots, but to alter shots as, as a team, change, change the game? It, it, it seemed like uh, it seemed like when they were missing some of the some of their layups and they had, had some shots blocked, that kind of changed their offense. Oh, uh, you know, Coach kind of emphasized after like the first couple drives, he kept on telling me just go up there, stand straight up tall, and make those guys shoot on top of me. I'm a big guy, so just don't foul and don't lead, reach over, and and I, and and I guess that impacted their dribble drive off me. Coach, did, did, did the, the fact that, that you guys it seems to have some some physical advantages in this game is that something you, you, you plan on exploiting from, from the beginning? Well, you know, it's tough with them because even though you're, even though you know. We don't have, I mean, Jeff's really a small forward, and Herb really, I count Herb as a power forward. He's not really not a center. Herb's a power forward. So um, I thought we were a little, a little bit at a disadvantage because of how good they drive the basketball. Uh, but I thought both of them, Jeff and Herb, did a good job early of just playing good, solid defense and, and, and getting some rebounds and giving us a chance to get out on the break. And that's something we've really struggled with early. So I thought both, these, both those guys really did a good job of, of being a presence on the defensive end as much as the offensive end. Jordan, you're obviously doing some scoring lately, but also but the, most of the time you were able to, your team is able to handle the pressure with some turnovers. But how do you feel overall you guys did in that respect? Oh, I think my guys did great. You know, we, coach had us well prepared. You know, the scouting report was great. And just for us to go out here and execute the way we did and to handle their pressure, it was, it was, it was big time for us, you know. I'm just, you know, happy that we got it done and looking forward to the next one. Did you get a sense that you kind of took their heart away in the second half there? It seemed like you guys were getting a tremendous number of really easy shots. Yeah, I think so. Our main focus at halftime was the first five minutes. You know, when we came out of halftime, they got like the first four buckets, and then we just went on our run. You know, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was great that we kind of, you know, understood what they was going to do. We handled their pressure and then just attacked them and just took their heart from there. Any more questions? All right, thanks, Nelson.